Hey, Steve Zonardo here with Remax Experts. Zonardo Associates, happy Monday morning. Just a real quick update on the market. Um, current inventory right now, we're at 16,171 units. So very similar to last week. Sales have dipped a bit to 658. Uh, we've had a really productive week last week regarding sales and, and listing properties and also offers on various homes and showing. So it was like this. Uh, don't mind the shirt we're going golfing today. Um, this on and off, um, you know, influx of, of buyer showings and then offers and then just a little bit of a, a slowdown. Um, but it's still very steady, steady, steady from where we're experiencing the last couple of months, which is great. Um, I'm going to go one step further now. Like, I think it's important to kind of start talking about absorption rate right in different areas. This is what we're going to start doing on listing appointments with clients is letting them understand what, what um, the time frame that a house is normally selling in an area. So what, what absorption rate does is basically tells you the amount of inventory uh, in a neighborhood and that how long it will take to sell. So let's just say, uh, for example, Peel region. So all of Peel didn't separate Caledon, um, Bolton or Brampton or Caledon, rather Caledon, Mississauga or Brampton. I just went for the full Peel to kind of give you an idea. So basically currently right now we have um, 2.6 months of inventory on the market. So it'll take literally 2.6 months uh, to evaporate the current inventory on the market right now, which is not bad. 2.6 months of inventory is not uh, very extensive, to be honest. That's still very, very good uh, for the amount of buyers out there. That's why we're still seeing this ebb and flow type market. Uh, for Vaughn itself, again, this is all of Vaughn. That's including condos. And I'm going to do one step deeper into Vaughn because I've kind of went into a micro version of this into Kleinberg. But currently right now in Vaughn, we're 2.4 months of inventory. We're still very, very good. Like only 2.4 months of inventory is not bad. At the height of the market, obviously, where we're like hovering about a one month or less or sometimes 1.6 months of inventory we're at 2.4 now uh, and then if we look at Simcoe region right now we have three months of inventory so a little bit higher than let's say uh, Peel and New York region um, but let's look one step further. When you kind of look into Kleinberg itself, so break it into Vaughn, into Kleinberg, you're looking at right now 6.3 months of inventory. Kleinberg right now is riddled with, with inventory. Uh, a lot of new builds came online, a lot of people selling, and it's this very high-end market where a lot of the, the price points are well over $2 million. So it's $2 million to like 4 $5 million. So it's a big stretch of inventory. Um, yeah, just to kind of give you an idea, we're going to do some micro versions of this in different areas like Tottenham, we'll do um, Bolton, we'll do a few of these different areas to kind of give you guys an idea more of a micro what, what we're facing for inventory. But currently right now, like I said, uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's still a pretty good lack of inventory. Um, and this might change clearly, right? We're going to be going into September, people start getting back into the swing of things, kids start going back to school. Parents start cleaning out the houses and then they start listing, you know, second, third week of September. Then there's this huge influx of inventory. This is why I'm trying to tell clients right now, like if, even if there is like a little bit of a dry spell, just hold tight right now because you're still in, in good company because there's less company. So, um, yeah, just just keep that going. Um, this article here, this was, again, this is, you know, someone's speculation and, and just comments um, or predictions, rather. It says why, why it might be several years before homes are more affordable in Canada. Um, I mean, this doesn't take a, riot, a rocket scientist to figure this out. Clearly, it's, it's you know, we're in that direction where the high interest rates, um, the cause of affordability is taking, taking a down spiral. So ultimately, even if you want to pay the money for a house, you can't because you can't afford the actual payment amounts or the qualification amount. So uh, what that does, is obviously, houses are going to have to start meeting these buyers. This is normal economics 101. Um, but let's have a look here. I mean... Um, so I guess we'll start here. Only only in the basic later part of the year, over the next couple of years, we'll we'll see an improvement in affordability. Stilo, which is my wife's last name, anticipated by halfway through 2024 home prices and will fall in about a quarter from their peak in 2022 before becoming somewhat more affordable in 27 as conditions such as high interest rates and prices even out. Um, he expects some affordability will improve over the next decade into the mid 2030s. Uh, yeah, I think obviously it's just grand speculation, but it's true in the sense that low interest rates are never coming back. Supposedly, uh, we don't know. Maybe sometimes they, 
there's some sort of re recession coming forward and they're going to start lowering them to kind of stimulate the economy. That's always a possibility. But currently right now, it looks like we're going to be in these four to five percent ranges for, for quite a while right now. And, and you know what? Um, the, the only downfall is if you bought in the height of the market, um, prices will come down. So it's going to be a little bit, obviously, it's going to be a, a, an effect on your home values. But but for future, um, it's always going to be good because for, let's say, investment purposes, you can always buy properties at a prices that make sense compared to the, the rent amounts. Um, your kids are going to have a better opportunity to buy houses and, and so on. But again, that's one theory. We know there's a ton of immigration coming in. Where do we house them? We have a lack of housing. So it's it's like I don't know which direction we're going to go into because ultimately we got to provide houses for uh, the, the new half a million to a million immigrants per year. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Have an amazing day. We'll talk soon. Ciao.